On Larry King Now, she's one of our favorites, the ever outspoken Sharon Osbourne. How do you explain the success of the talk? We don't pretend to be something we're not. We are totally ourselves, and it's honest, and it just works. What do you make of what you're seeing in Washington? You don't feel secure that everything will be smooth and people are in control of what they should be in control of. I, I wake up afraid of what on earth is going to happen. Who's he going to insult today? What's it like at home with us? You guys watch Netflix? What do you do? We are so antisocial. The pair of us are very, very antisocial. We don't go out socially much at all. And yeah, we love movies. Addicted. Plus, he was pissed and he comes on with an attitude and he goes, and, and what are you? What have you done in this industry? And I was like, kid, don't start with me because I'm going <laughs> to eat you up and <laughs> you out. That's next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our special guest, always great to have her, Sharon Osborne, TV personality, host, author, music manager, and matriarch to the one of the world's most famous families. Sharon is a host on the Emmy Award-winning daytime show The Talk and a judge on The X Factor, the talk airs weekdays on CBS. Congratulations on your Emmy nomination. We Thank got one, you. too. You're in entertainment. We're in information. But you won't be at the awards, right? No, not this year. I can't because Ozzy starts his world tour that day. So I have to be with him in Florida that day. What do you do as his road manager? Well, I... It's the Control first. Him. It's no. It's the <laughs> first day, so I want to see how the set goes down, how it's paced, how the audience like it. It's a new production, so I have to go and see that that's all working fine, how it looks, and you know, I have to be there to support. First how day. long does he work on stage? How long does his show? Two hours. Yeah, two hour show. What do you? How do you explain the success of the talk? Ratings are at the top. What, what is it about that show? I've been on it. I love being on it. What is it? Do you know what it is? It's like you get a bunch of women. We have nothing connecting us. We're all in different lanes in the industry. And yet it works because I think that we don't pretend to be something we're not. We are totally ourselves. And it's honest. And it just works. We are so blessed. It's a great show, as you say, you've been on. You know, we are blessed to be working with each other. And at CBS, it's fantastic. And you and Julie Chen and Sarah Gilbert have been there the longest, right? Yeah. You were an original? Yeah. What is your, when you meet behind the scenes before you go on, do, yeah. you, do you see uh, that you have a role in that group? I think it's an undef... We all do. Because we now know each other's timing, we kind of work, we know who's going to say what, because we're, you know, eight years on now. So I kind of, um, as Sarah always says to me, there's nothing that you haven't been involved in. There's, you know, whether we're talking about a plane crash or, you know, a death or whatever, you've been there, you've been through it. So in that way, I'm good, but I'm also terrible with names and I never knew who any I never know who anyone is so she's always making fun at me about that my son Cannon was on once for Father's yes, Day was he was I remember it yeah. was funny after Aisha Tyler left Eve joined how's she doing she's doing great she's really doing good it see again it's an odd mix but yet it works you know it's all down to the personalities do you have a, other than me do you have a favorite guest? I think our favorite guest that we've ever had for me is Hugh Jackman. He was absolutely just fantastic to talk to. He's a great and a great actor, great singer. Isn't he? He can do anything. Anything. He's so multi-talented. And all of that, he, he happens to be a good guy. Yeah. Which is even better. Good family man. Yeah. Is there any interview that didn't go the way you were expecting? Yeah. Um, we've had a couple of meanies for me. You know, again, everybody's take is different. Somebody can come in and I can go, that was amazing. And the other girls will go, do you think? You know. But I, I didn't get on with one guy, that Ashton Kushner. 
Oh, the tech guy. Yeah, did well, actor-ish. Didn't get on with him at all. Highest paid actor, I think, on television. (laughs) Lordy Lord. What did you like about Ashton? Bad attitude for me. For me, because I got his name wrong. So he was pissed. And he comes on with an attitude. And he goes, "And, and what are you? What have you done in this industry? And I was like, kid? Don't start with me, because I'm going <laughs> to eat you up and sh you out. And so I, I was just like, you don't know what you're dealing with, kid. Is there any subject you will not talk about? Oh, me? No, I'll, I mean... No, the show won't talk. The show won't talk about, of course. We don't like to talk about politics. We don't like to talk about um, guns, anything that's... Um, the opposite to, of that rival show. Which it, just... Absolute opposite to The View, yeah. And, and why do you think... Why don't you want to talk about guns? Um, it's the network don't like to take um, a policy either way. They're not political. We're not with a political network. It's a network of entertainment. It's not one or the other sided. And so we're totally non-political network. So they think that it swings one way or the other and it goes against what they're about. So you wouldn't invite Donald Trump? I did, actually, but he he didn't get back to me. I wonder why. (laughs) (laughs) Do you have a dream guest? Mm, No, we've had... We're blessed with so many great people like you, you know, from the fabulous Debbie Reynolds. You know, we've had amazing people. Oh, I love Debbie. Uh, You know, you could just talk to people like that forever. Uh, Since this is... Don Rickles, everybody, you know. Oh, Don. This, this is not the talk, and it is Larry King. Now, what do you make of what you're seeing in Washington? Oh, my Lord. You know, it's kind of fearful, and I know a lot of my friends are fearful. We kind of wake up every day and go, what's going to happen now? You what's know, next? Because, yeah, you don't feel secure that everything would be smooth and people are in control of what they should be in control of and running it professionally. For me, I I wake up afraid of what on earth is going to happen. Who's he going to insult today and (laughs) somebody's going to get crazed at him and, you know, it's all going to set off. What did you make of Stormy Daniels? I really do feel she's telling the truth because why would somebody hand over 130 grand if there was no foundation, if there was nothing to it? You'd just go... Go away, lady, and, you know, we'll see you in court. If she was pressurizing them for money, if it was, because we don't know, if it was her pressurizing them to say, I'm going to sell my story unless you give it me, That's you say, illegal. see you in court. Mm. But I, I just think it's, um, for me, it doesn't bother me because he didn't do it when he was in office. It was way before. If he did do it, it was in... should bother Melania. That's the person who should be bothered, not us. It's like, hey, you have to live with him. We don't. What did you make of that kid's march? <gasps> oh, just so proud, so yeah. proud of those kids. And they're not kids. They are more than that. It's oh, I'm what more. hope. What hope. You watch something like that and you go, there is hope out there. There's such great young minds coming up that... It's going to be okay. Ultimately, everything is going to be okay. Next, Sharon on her remarkable career in music and beyond and what's in store for the new Osborne Family Podcast. Stay with us on this edition of Larry King Now. We're back with the wonderful Sharon Osborne. Tell me about this podcast simply called The Osbournes. Ozzy, Sharon, Jack, and Kelly. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to do. How often do you do it? Uh, we do one a week, and just a lot of fun. We just get around and talk. Sometimes we have a guest, sometimes we don't. Like this week, we've got Cheryl Underwood from our show, and it's quite the filthiest show you've ever listened to, but it's funny, <laughs> really funny. You like doing it? Yeah, very much. It's How's easy. the family doing? Is it as close as ever? Yeah, everybody's good. Jack and Ozzy are filming there, you know adventure show they do together and Ozzy's getting ready to kick off his last world tour and everybody's good. Why is it his last? You know, he will keep performing 
but not on a touring basis. The travel is too much. It's way, way too much. And it's not that he wants to retire and do nothing. He just doesn't want to travel anymore because that's what really gets. What's it like at home with us? You guys watch Netflix? What do you do? Everything. We are so antisocial. You're the pair of us are very, very antisocial. We don't go out socially much at all. We're not like, you know, big partiers and, you know, go out with every invitation that comes in. We don't go anywhere. We, if we go out, we'll go out to dinner on our own. And yeah, we love movies. Addicted. Ozzy's crazy about documentaries on the Second World War and the First World War. I love still, that. I love those. Loves shit. them. Okay, let's get an update on Ozzy and this conf dispute with the Staples Center. Yeah. All right. They give me the story. They want him to work the Staples Center, or he can't work in England at yes. their other place. They and are. He doesn't want to work the Staples Center. Why? Okay, I'll tell you. Okay, let's take the Staples Center here. It's a great building. Beautiful. A fantastic building for sport and for a different genre of music. A lot of So rap, Michael Bublé there was a great concert. It's not for Ozzy. He doesn't like the building. He doesn't feel comfortable in that building. He's performed there, but he, do, he doesn't... It's not for him. And it's not really a rock and roll building. So he feels not at home there, where he loves to play the forum. Now, in England, there is a venue called the O2, which is a big white dome, and they called it originally the Millennium Dome. It was built for the Millennium. And then AEG came in and bought it from the government, and they run it, and it's this huge entertainment centre. The problem is in London, that there aren't that many venues that can hold 20,000 people. There's only one, that's the O2. Everything else is 10 and under, or then you go to 80,000, which is the stadium in London. So the O2 has that 20,000 yeah. capacity, and it's a very comfortable So building. they're saying if you want to work there, you got to work Staples. Why are yeah. they forcing him to work at a place he doesn't like? because they are in competition with Live Nation. And Live Nation Owns run the forum. the forum and the Madison Square Gardens. So they... So are, where does it stand right now? We're suing them because it's... Um, They're forcing you to work and you're saying you don't want to. We don't want to. But so you want to work England. We want it. Mm. And I honestly feel that Aussie has been doing it for 50 years. And I think that they owe it to Ozzy, who's worked for them many times, many, many times. They should say, go in the building if you want. Because it, it's just a show of strength. Two companies arguing with each other. How's Kelly doing? She's doing great. She's, she's, a, been, she's a TV host, right? Yeah, but she's taken time out because she wants yeah. to figure out what she wants to do. First time she's ever had any time out. And she's figuring what does she really want to do. Fame came early for you and for the children. Should you have shielded them more, do you think? I go back and forth on that, Larry. All the time I go back and forth. And I think I came from a showbiz family. My mother came from a showbiz family. And I'm like, it's, it's, what, it's what we do. It's what we do. What's the biggest downside to celebrity? There's a lot for this generation, not for me, but for my kids, there's a lot of negativity that goes along with it on social media, you know. As well as praise, as many people love you, as many people hate you and say really hurtful things. But there's a big upside too, isn't there? A huge upside. <laughs> After the break, Sharon jumps into the hot seat for a game of If You Only Knew. You won't want to miss this. Don't go away. Back with Sharon Osborne. The talk airs weekdays on CBS. Just a little game of if you <laughs> only knew. Mm -hmm. Who was your childhood celebrity crush? John Lennon. Not bad. Guilty pleasure. <gasps> Chocolate. Me too. Yeah, big time. Strangest fan encounter. Oh, this lady from England, and she was like 
stalking me and I went to theatre to see a, a play in London and I came out of the bathroom to wash my hands and she was stood next to me. And then the next week I came home to Beverly Hills and she sat outside my house. What did she want? To be my friend. Did you report her? No. What happened? She just went away? I just said to her, I can't be your friend, you know, you've got to stop this. Thing you miss most about touring with Ozzy? Well, you tour with him now, right? Do you know what? It's never the same as it was years ago when it was fun and silly and we had nothing to lose. When you've got nothing to lose but only to gain, that's when it's fun. What do you got to lose now? Yeah, you know, it's like credibility, your status where you are. You want to sell as many seats as you've always done, you know. Mm. Favorite thing about being a grandmother? Oh, it just brings life and sunshine into the home. It makes your home alive. Secret talent? Spending. <laughs> Biggest risk you ever took? Um, I suppose leaving my father's business. So he was an agent, right? He was a manager. Yeah. Yeah. Person you'd like to switch places with for a day? Uh, the Queen. Aha. Uh -huh. Something we should be paying more attention to? The world, you mean? Gun control. Person from history you'd like to interview? Adolf Hitler. Me too. Yep. Best part about living in L.A.? Everything. We live in a bubble here. It's a great city. It is. What kind of animal you wish you could talk to? Oh, my dogs. Best piece of advice you ever received? To shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't listen, did you? <laughs> Worst piece of advice you ever received? Oh. Oh, don't marry my husband. Someone told you that? Yeah. Sharon Osborne in 10 years. Still working. Not bad. In our final moment, Sharon Osborne is answering your questions from social media. We'll be right back. We're back with Sharon Osborne, nominated for another Emmy. The talk airs weekdays on CBS. Some social media questions for the lovely okay. Sharon Osborne. How would you describe the color of your hair? Burgundy? Yeah, burgundy. All right, at Ricardo Darren on Twitter, what was it about Ozzy that caught your eye when you first met him? Sense of humor. Great sense of humor. Ryan Craig on Facebook, did you ever think about being the lead of your own band, maybe calling it Red Sabbath? Oh. I couldn't, I, I don't have one musical note in my entire body. Where did you meet Ozzy? Oh, my Lord. Where did I first meet? Oh, he came into my father's office. He, your father managed him? Uh, not in the beginning, no. Kathy Krieger on the Larry King Now blog. What's it like when you go back to London? Are you more famous there? About the same. About the same, yeah. Is the talk seen in London? No, but I do um, X Factor there. Oh, that's yeah. where you do it. Kathy also asks, are the tabloids and the paparazzi worse in the UK or the US? UK. Yeah, what is it about them? It started there, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it did. It did. Their tabloids are terrible. <laughs> do you know what it is? They just can write anything, and they don't care if you sue. Because the more rubbish they, they say about you, the more papers they sell. And all of their lawyers are on payroll anyway, so it, it doesn't mean anything to them. When you sue, they don't care. Have you sued? Yeah, yeah. One? Oh, no, several times, several times. Steve S. on the Larry King Now blog, who is your all-time favorite interview on the talk? You said that. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. KJM 1016, do you ever miss doing the Osbournes and would you ever bring it back? Um, it's no to both those questions. I don't miss it. It was a great time. We had so much fun, but I don't miss it. No, we couldn't bring it back. Well, is the podcast sort of like it? Um, we 
talk about different things. It's just the four of us together talking, but we'll, we wouldn't do a show again. What kind of father is Ozzy? Um, he's very, very caring. He, he hates to see his kids sad, like every parent. And he's, he's a really caring father. How's your boy doing? He's doing good, thank you. He's good. What has MS, what's the biggest effect MS has had on him? Uh, probably on his eye, one of his eyes, yeah. Do you trouble seeing? He, um, he woke up blind and um, slowly but surely his sight came back and he says I think it's about 75% back. In one eye? In one eye, but I know he has trouble with colors now. Colors meaning separating them? In, in with one eye, it's, um, he doesn't see all colors. That's tough to live with. When was he, how old was he when he was diagnosed? 25. Yeah, it's very young to be diagnosed. At yeah, and how old is he now? Oh, six years old. And you love being a grandmother? I adore it. What do you have? Three girls. Three what? Three little girls. They're all, all girls that he's no had. No boys. No boys, can you believe it? All girls. Are you a doting grandmother? I'm a terrible grandmother. Spoiling. Oh, I'm the worst, the absolute worst. You are also a delight. Thank you so much. Thanks to my guest, a dear friend, a great lady, Sharon Osborne. always a delight. Be sure to tune into The Talk. It airs weekdays on CBS. As always, you can find me on Twitter at, at Twitter on Find me on Twitter at Kingstings. I just get so nervous around that. See you next time. <laughs>